It's your two favorite vault technicians, Richard Chapman and Mike Myers. And today we're going to be taking a look at how we actually deal with some of the real hands-on tools that we look at at uh, CyberDow Labs. So Richard, what we're going to be talking about here, now keep in mind, Richard, I, I can talk basic security. Uh, it, it's like, if you ask me how to explain how an internal combustion engine works, I can absolutely explain it to you. But that doesn't mean I know how to actually work on an internal combustion engine. So that's what we're about to do right now here, right? So a big part of, of being an a, a, a analyst is you're dealing with alerts, right? I mean, that's why you're sitting there most of the time, correct? Exactly. All right. So, and, and now what's an important thing that you just described to me that I wasn't ready to hear yet is that an alert is just an alert. Some piece of software has started making a flashing light or buzzing or, you know, dancing robots across the screen or whatever it might be. And, uh, it's your job right now to be dealing with this alert and to determining what's going on. This, this may not even be an incident, right? It could just be nothing. That's that's exactly right. And that's actually why it's important for them to, uh, for these different companies to have us. They need us there to be able to see what's going on. Uh, computers work in ones and zeros. You know that as well as I do. All on, all off, right? That gray area is kind of a little bit of a tougher area to be able to uh, navigate in. So that's where we as cybersecurity analysts, that's where we need to be able to actually uh, take our ability to analytically look at things and think through some of these uh, alerts and decide, is this an incident? Is okay, so let's go ahead. To, yeah. Sure. So Richard, let's go ahead and get the scenario painted together here real quick. Give me a give me a quick uh, you know the one paragraph situation and name a couple of tool sets that are in front of you that you're going to be using to help do this analysis. Absolutely, actually, why don't I do this? Let me go ahead and share my screen, and I can Yay. show you our SOC dashboard. Give me one second. I want to share this screen right there. There we go. All right. Hopefully, you should be seeing my screen here. Oh, I've seen that screen before. You have, yeah. So this is our SOC dashboard. And actually across the top, you'll see we've got a bunch of different tools here. These are the tools that cybersecurity analysts use on a daily basis to be able to look at these alerts, look at the activity that's going on in an environment, whether it's network traffic or endpoint uh, issues or email that's coming into the system and be able to, to pay attention to it, monitor it, investigate it and make a determination as to whether it's an issue or not. Um, I, I figured we'd spend a little bit of time looking at fish, uh, phishing email alert. Uh, phishing emails are one of the biggest uh, focal points when it comes to hiring managers and, and their uh, desire for analysts to have knowledge. They want analysts that know how to look at a phishing email and make a determination as to whether it's an issue or not. How's that sound? Does that sound okay? Sure. Can I ask one real quick question? You can Which ask may just lead to your answer you right now. Yeah. How do you know you have a phishing email come in? Yeah, absolutely. So when I look at this particular tool, and um, what is this I, tool, by the way? So this tool is Proofpoint. It's actually one of the signature email security tools in the industry. Um, they actually tout themselves as being one of the best, if not the best, as far as being able to analyze email coming into environments. And we use this in our environment here to be able to build that hands-on experience as an analyst. Um, but initially, this is kind of our dashboard setup, and you can see there's actually a few alerts here that are uh, basically what, ha what has happened is Proofpoint has its rule set. It has its items that are designed to generate an alert for an analyst to look at and different things create those alerts. So IPs that don't line up, uh, sender information that actually shows up as being malicious, malicious links where they're trying to get the user to click on a link that'll take them to a malicious website or sure. even potentially download a file and even file attachments as well too. All of those act as indicators of compromise and can and in, in essence create an alert. So, so Richard, let me ask you one more question real quick. Yeah. Is this proof point tool tied directly into your email servers? Like does this proof point tool have the uh, administrative uh, usernames and passwords for your web server? So in essence, this is looking at all of the activity that's coming in and out of the mail exchange. So it can see all of the header information for every email. There is an administrator side. So whoever is uh, responsible for doing the engineering, they can actually see things a little bit differently than the analyst can, if that makes sense. Okay, but in general, this particular tool is staring at all the uh, 
mail traffic coming in and out of your mail server. Correct. It's analyzing all of that mail that's coming in and out. Very good. Okay. So I actually was looking at an alert a little earlier today, and I thought it'd be a good example for us to kind of take a peek at. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. There we go. Hopefully that makes it a little bit more visible on your end. It um, does. Thank you. Beautiful. So simple, simple point. I could, I could talk for hours on Proofpoint, by the way, just so you know. So I'm going to try to make this relatively simple and straightforward. We've got different icons here that indicate different types of phishing emails. For instance, you've got a little mask here, uh, which shows uh, an indication of an imposter type email where they're trying to pretend to be somebody else. You've got the little hook, which is a traditional phishing email, and they're trying to fish for some sort of information. There's a little bomb icon for when you've got a malicious file attached. You know, all kinds of cool little things that we teach you and so forth. But we're going to take a look at this quick phishing email right here. And first and foremost, this is a link that was actually inside of the phishing email or of the potential phishing email. That link is a very long, very ugly looking uh, link, right? Uh, last time I checked, when I wanted to go to a website, I didn't type in something this long. I typed in something much, much shorter. Yep. So right off the bat, this is a little bit hanky. It shows up as a little bit uh, questionable. Now, the one cool thing that I really like about Proofpoint is you can take and look at this email or look at this link right in what's called a browser isolation window. It's like a virtual environment. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna actually take and open up that link in a virtual safe environment so that if there is any malicious activity, it's not gonna hurt our machine, our host machine that we're working on. Now, right off the bat, when you go to this link, you see a CAPTCHA. Uh, most people are familiar with, you know, select the, pic the, uh, the squares that have a, a fire hydrant or a boat in it, right? And they're just trying to make sure that there's a legitimate person sitting there. And the crazy part about this is this is trying to make it seem more legit. Okay? Yeah, I was going to say that does not look like a real CAPTCHA there. It's right. It's, but, you know, some people might be like, oh, this is cool. It's fun. I move the puzzle piece over. Boom. It says, oh, okay, I'm there. But then this user is presented with an Outlook login. Now, as an analyst, we teach our analysts how to not only look at the screen, but also look at this link. You know, yeah. this link does not look like a traditional login for an Outlook uh, email uh, access, right? As a matter yeah, of fact, that, that's a classic security plus kind of question right there too. Exactly. So, you know, we can see, and based off of this initial sandbox look, we can see that this is a credential harvester. This yep. is an attempt to buy a phishing uh, email or by a, a malicious threat actor to get you to input your username and your password so that they then now have access to your email, potentially even to other environments as well too, depending on how good you are at changing your usernames and passwords and uh, keeping them separate and unique, right? Sure. Uh, don't, one, one key component here, don't use the same password for your email and your bank. Bad idea. <laughs> so, uh oh, I better go change things. Hang on. Uh, you might want to, right? <laughs> I don't do that. No, no, no. All right. So once we close that out, we can actually see what Proofpoint did with this email. Now, Proofpoint isn't just a, here's the information, you have to make a full decision. It also does a lot of activity as well. For instance, we can actually see that this message was blocked. Proofpoint was able to, from the beginning, identify that it was, it was a malicious link, credential harvester, things just weren't lining up, and it said, we're going to block this. Now, sometimes, sometimes Proofpoint goes, well, we don't have enough information to be able to do that, so we're going to go ahead and deliver it to the user. But on the back end, they're still analyzing, and sometimes they will even change their mind later on. So again, another reason why analysts are so important, because the, the tools do a great job, and I would say 98% of the time, they're pretty much on point, but they do still need us to look at some of these actions and, and verify, and sometimes things do slip through the cracks, and again, that's where we get to shine. So um, Proofpoint will actually take a malicious link, and it can rewrite the link so that if somebody were to actually try to visit that link, they would be presented with a browser page that says, hey, this is potentially a malicious link you might not want to go here. So that's what a rewritten URL. So it's just another layer of protection that Proofpoint- Wait, do. wait a minute. You could actually inject into the mail document extra information like that? 
Yeah, so Proofpoint will do what's called rewriting and they'll they'll actually input a URL defense link. And in essence, what it does is it redirects that link instead of sending it to the actual website that the link was designed to send you to, it'll send you kind of to an intermediary uh, page, which says, hey, this might not be a good site for you to go to. Gotcha. And uh, at that point, it's it's letting you know, hey, this is potentially a malicious link. Don't go here. Don't try to go here. Uh, you might want to think about it, right? So Okay. Definitely kind of a nice, a nice option there. You know email and you know headers and so forth. You can actually click on the email itself and you can actually go into that email and see some additional information as well. Um, it doesn't show you the full header and you cannot see the contents of the email itself, which is a little bit of a blind spot as an analyst, but you can still make determinations. You can actually look at your subject here. You can see who your, sender, who your recipient was. You can see the IP address that's associated with the sender. And just as a, as a quick double check, you can even take that and throw that into, you know, maybe a, an open source intelligence tool like, you know, Virus Total, Abuse IPDB, Central Ops, something like that, and you can check the, the the reputation of that link. Now, this this IP is not showing up as a malicious IP in Virus Total, but it might show up as slightly malicious in another tool. Yeah, but, but they always start off clean, right? Until they're they do. recognized. They absolutely do. Absolutely. So I got a quick question for you. Yeah. Uh, for a lot of these spam situations. Especially if they're getting a lot of spam, don't you just like block them all? You know, you'd, you'd like to think that you could just block everything. But unfortunately, when you take that measure, you start blocking things that you want to actually be able to get through. Sure. OK, so that's where you get your false negatives and exactly you got or you, false you positives. Get, rather. False positives. You will get your yeah false negatives. We never see. Right. That's uh, right. But false positives, you will get false positives. And as an analyst, you'll see those. And sometimes you're able to help the engineering side of things by recommending to your engineering team, hey, let's go ahead and see if we can tune this out. Let's add this sender as a, an acceptable sender. Let's add this IP as an IP that's okay. Or let's block this IP, right? So we have the ability as analysts to also not only see the information, but really make an impact. And hands-on experience doing that, like we do here in our environment, gives that knowledge and gives that experience. And that allows you to talk about it as well, too. Well, and even it allows being, you to be able to do it. Sure, even being able to do something as basic as like that sender IP address, once that's recognized as a bad guy, to be able to generate filtering tools in real time, obviously, yep. that's that's what an analyst does, right? I mean, that's exactly. one tiny example. Exactly. And in some environments, your larger environments, you probably have teams of individuals who handle uh, those specific tasks, like a lot more compartmentalization occurs. Right. Um, so I, as the analyst, might not actually be adding that IP to the blacklist or the block list or a watch list, but I might be recommending it. I might be sending that over in a document or a form or an online tool to be able to say, hey, we need to add this IP so that we can watch it, pay attention to it, things like that. So, gotcha. Yeah. Definitely. I, one of the things I love about being an analyst is it's always different. It's never exactly the same. It's a lot of fun. And again, you know, not to not I, I like I said, I could spend all day talking about the investigation itself. But, you know, these tools that we utilize every day, email security tools, network security tools, endpoint security tools, which are some of my favorites, um, you know, being able to watch what's going on in the entire environment and ultimately at the end of the day making a difference in the security of your environment for the information, the users, the people that uh, that's a lot of fun. I, I, I love, I love uh, that analyst perspective. So, uh, but it thank is, you. It, yeah, no, it's, well, I just, but well, let me sneak in one more thing real quick, Richard. Yeah, yeah. That is, you know, the tool is it, it, this is not a simple tool. It is a tool that you need a lot of knowledge about, uh, you know, SMTP, for example, in there, or just mail in general might be an easier way to look at it. Yeah. Uh, and that, you know, so many people are always like, oh, Mike, well, I could just have a tool to do this or a tool to do that. And it's like, the reality is, is the tools are only as good as the person who's, you know, got their handle on the, their, their finger on the, on the trigger. Right. And, uh, exactly. you know, and, and that, that's uh, a, a big part of what uh, CyberNow Labs does. It's not only introduced to the, the tool itself, of course, but to make sure that the students understand the, the core, values behind whatever protocol or technology we happen to be talking about at any given moment. 
Exactly right. And that's why, why, like I was saying earlier, you know, the, the tools are great. Um, computers are great. Their ability to make determinations for simple cut and dry. This is bad, you know, block this, this activity. You know, there are some times where there's gray area. Um, you know, there are different processes on endpoints that are legitimate processes that run every day that are used for service applications every day. Um, those can be utilized in malicious ways. So sometimes you need that analyst to sit there and look at it and go, okay, is this being used legitimately or maliciously? It's tough for the computer to see that gray area. Gotcha. Awesome. Well, listen, thank you again for spending a few minutes with me. I, I, I love being able to spend time with you. And hopefully this gives a little bit of uh, understanding as to the hands-on atmosphere, You know, not just knowing the materials or knowing the information uh, from the different certifications that are out there, but also being able to put hands-on computer in you know, real attacks, real network, with real security tools and be able to learn uh, and get that experience hands-on. And fantastic. And Richard, do me a favor, will you? Yep. Anytime you play with any of these tools, call me first. <laughs> will do. Thanks, Richard. Thank you, sir.